Hello, this is Distracted Lord, and welcome back to SnowRunner, and I am still up in Alaska, but I've been doing some things in the other four maps, no, other three maps. This is Mountain River, I've done all the tasks, this is White Valley, I've also done all the tasks, and this is Pedro Bay, and I've done all the tasks. I do still have a bunch of contracts, and there is two that I have unlocked at the moment, which is currently restricting the other ones, which is cargo delivery here and floating drill here, and those are what we're going to be doing today. But we can first take a look at my usual amount of hey I've gained some new trucks. So this is the BM17 I had last episode. It it's pretty big now. It's got the race suspension on it. Then I have this Ank MK38, which is incredibly good. It has the race suspension and the big tyres and you may also notice it doesn't have a frame add-ons because you don't actually have the option to put other things on it. The sideboard bed that it has is part of it and cannot be removed. I mean it's still very useful for transporting cargo, you can just make it pull trailers. We then have this Derry Longhorn 3194 which is some sort of big military truck thing that's not actually all that great because it doesn't get the best tyres and it has no race suspension and then it's frame add-ons you can only have semi-trailer saddles which is kind of annoying and then we have this big cat 745c and this thing's ridiculous like this thing is not stopped by puny things like mud and water it just goes on through until it finds a narrow bit and then it has trouble but it also, it's another heavy one, so it has like, limited add-ons. You can have a container carrier, a fuel carrier, and a log carrier. It does seem that most of the heavy trucks have less add-ons and things. And we have my old White Western Star over here as well. Now I wanted to use the BM-17 or the Dairy Longhorn for what we're going to do today, but unfortunately they're just not good enough and the White Western Star just is still very good. I've also made some changes to this. It now has the big West Line and it has the high range gearbox for all the extra speed. You see it now has eight gears and it goes faster when it actually gets going. It's not the most powerful thing I have, it's not the fast, most fast thing I have, but somehow it's the best at going through mud, which is slightly weird. And we're going to need to go through some mud because of the the contracts that we're going to be doing today. We're going to start off with floating drill, which is get the great big trailer from over here and take it and deliver it to the port, which isn't too hard, it's not too far. The second one is in a different map. We're going to have to drive all the way up to Pedro Bay to pick up the trailer from the service hub down here to drive it back down to Mountain River to deliver it to this factory down here. So I don't think we're actually going to visit White Valley today. No, White Valley is not exactly exciting. It does have this airstrip down here which is very cool because it's a nice place to test how fast your cars go the most important thing in the game but anyway let's actually get the western star down to the big trailer that we need to pick up so there's this dirt road here which we're going to have to go down and i didn't turn sharp enough okay but it looks like a normal dirt road until you get over here and then it just becomes a load of mud and this is this is why we can't use the Derry Longhorn or the Royal BM17 because they just simply don't make it through this mud even without the trailer they get stuck the only vehicle I have that can actually get through here without getting stuck is the White Western Star but you see, we can make it through here without it. We might have to use the winch a lot to get the actual big trailer through here. 
because we do sort of get stark up there. Gonna have to use some winch for the extra speed. But this thing should be able to make it with the big trailer. There's also a section of road just down here with a lovely amount of camber, which we are most definitely not going to be able to make our way through with the really tall trailer. Fortunately, there's a little detour that goes off here, which is not going to be easy to go through because it's not that wide, but it should be better than rolling going along here and having the trailer fall down into the sea. As you can see, we can go quite fast, we're not even in the highest gear, and we go slightly scarily fast. And we can just lock up the brakes and slide on in. But here's the, the big trailer. Camera, please don't do that. The, the big trailer we need to get, as you can see, it's quite tall. It has a lot of wheels, but it is, if not top heavy, it still has a high center of mass. So we are definitely not going to take this along the camber route. Let's see how well we do pulling this thing. Okay, so we move. We can go fairly quickly. Let's not smash it into the building. That was close. Definitely skill, not luck. And now you'd have to drive back down here and through this lovely amount of mud. Okay, we're not going to be going particularly fast, I don't think. Because we're probably going to need to use diff locks for a lot of this because it's weighing down the back so much. It is very long as well, so trying to make it round the corner might prove a challenge. So yeah, we're going to take this corner as wide as, like, well, I mean, it could have been wider on the entrance, but we're going to be wide on the exit, and we're still taking down the sign, and the trailer is completely off the road. Yeah, this road wasn't really designed for this trailer. How did they get it down here then? But we are starting to have a bit of difficulty, probably because it's trying to climb a hill. Fortunately, the big engine that I put in this thing has many torques, so we are currently fine. Although, there is this sort of detour detour, which I have noticed. And I did drive down the detour once before just to see what it's like, and it gets a bit narrow up ahead. Not ridiculously narrow, but narrow enough that this thing might not have fun. So, we're just going to try and go down the detour detour, and there's a tree in the way. Can we get that? Can we just sort of scrape along that tree? Yeah, it's fine. I said it's low to the ground, and then proceeded to try and take it down here, and it didn't work. Okay, winch time. We can still make it with a bit of steering and winch. There we go. Well, I don't like the angle we're coming down this. I want to make sure I'm going down the hill straight, because if I'm going down the hill to wonky angle, that's not going to work. Also, for a moment there, the wheels of the trailer were not on the ground, and it was just sliding along. That doesn't seem safe. Oh, um, why is it tilting over? it? Okay. I guess it's got a lot of weight at the bottom of it, so it's not falling over just yet. And there's a tree in the way. Okay. The weight we have behind us enabled me to completely destroy that fallen tree. Pull the truck, yes. Use the power of a standard winch. We are coming up now to the muddy section, and I'm actually going to go down to the left over here because there's more winch points basically it's just as muddy but there are trees in the path which means that I will run them over without difficulty because I'm so heavy right now but I should be able to use them as winch points a bit and that will help me get through and we have already encountered difficulty Okay, I was hoping we'd get a bit further than this before I had to start using the winch. 
So the truck is now most of the way through, and the trailer has just got into the actual mud. But it's been very slow, I'm having to winch to all these fallen over trees every step of the way. Well, I'm hoping we have enough fuel to make it out, but I am definitely going to have to bring something along with some extra fuel. The truck itself is now climbing its way out onto dry land. Well, it's not really dry, it's snowy. But onto land rather than mud. And now hopefully we will be able to pull the trailer out. Although it doesn't seem to be too happy about it. That's because I'm still waiting to the tree. I'm so smart. I thought I detached myself from the tree. Apparently I didn't. But I am absolutely going to have to call in a refueling truck to be able to make it all the way to the port. The truck is now shuddering and dying out of thirst. So we're gonna stop it here and then we're going to go and slap the fuel carrier on this thing. Oh no it cost me eight and a half thousand money. Is that put me back below five hundred thousand? How terrible. Anyway I'm gonna use this because it looks cooler. I could use various other things for refueling that would be more efficient. But well this thing just looks this thing just looks so cool with the fuel carrier. It doesn't have a great top speed though. 14 miles an hour. Wow. That that's not great. Well it doesn't go anywhere fast, but it will go just about anywhere unless it's too narrow. Which I shall demonstrate. Can I actually fit past it? Ah, uh, I parted too close to things. I'm gonna have to do a quick bit of driving through the snow. Not that that's a problem, because this thing just doesn't care about the snow. Bit of a hill there, put it in low plus because I've got the advanced special gearbox in this thing. And hey look, this mud we had so much trouble in. I wonder how this giant heavy thing here is going to fare. And it actually does sink into it. I haven't actually driven this thing through here. This is a nice place to test your vehicle's mud capability and most things will fail. But yeah, we're just, you know, we're just going along. Put it into a standard low. And don't need the winch at all. We're just cruising along through the mud. Yeah, this thing is quite good at dealing with mud. Can I just drive over these rocks? Yeah. Rocks don't care. Also, look how big it is. It is huge. Just dominates the Western Star. I keep pressing the wrong buttons today. Anyway, we're going to fuel carrier into the Western Star, give it fuel, and I can just teleport this thing home because I'm lazy. Hop back in the Western Star and restart it. Get out of the mud a bit. And now we head off down to the port. We've had an issue. Stop recording because didn't think anything was going to happen. We literally we drove out of the entrance way down there. Came around this corner. I think I clipped the back wheels on this curb here, and it got very angry. Not in the sense of physics got angry. It just went boing and flipped itself over. So I'm going to have to bring out something else to come and flick it, flip it back up again. Well, let's bring out the ang because I probably won't use it at all this episode. And I want to use it for something, so I'm going to find an excuse for it, which is now. So as you see, this thing has insane acceleration for some reason. Top speed is not the best, but its acceleration is ridiculous. I don't know why. It is an impressive sight, this amount of wheels on their side. So, oh, it moved. Why is it moving? What we need to do is swap the curve to the Western Star so that I can detach the trailer and then I can swap back over to the Ankh and we can recover the Western Star so it's out of the way. This thing is the most smoke of any vehicle I've seen. Like, there's just clouds and clouds of black smoke just pour out of this thing as you drive. Much pain later, I have got it back on its wheels. We can reattach it. There's, there's not much snow left around here. There's rather large amounts of mud where I've driven backwards and forwards and pushed and 
pull this stupid thing to get it to get back on its wheels. But now I'm going to drive extra carefully and in fact I'm probably just going to swap to this view which means I won't be able to see the truck as well but at least I'll know if it's about to fall over because I don't want it to fall over again. It took me far too long to get it back on its wheels. Just have to make sure the truck doesn't crash into anything. Ah, we are currently also carrying a rock. Wonderful. Got a bit of speed up on a straight and now I'm going to slam on the brakes and slide into an icy corner because all the corners are icy. The port is just down here so I'm just gonna put it in low and use engine braking because you can't damage your engine by over revving it because the game doesn't simulate revs so by putting it in low gear we can basically just engine brake. Now we just have to get it over there so we just take this nice and wide. Okay, this is a nice big corner. We're fine. We can get some speed up as we go over here. Woo! That only took an incredibly long time. Yeah, I want to use something else for the other one. So let's see. It's not hard to get to, is it? No, I, fi I fixed the pipeline bit. So I can just drive down the road all the way. Bit of ice, bit of mud. Yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. And on the mountain riverside. Okay, it's just off the road there. But I haven't fixed that pipe yet because I can't. So we're going to have to go through that. That's going to be a problem. Or we take it a long way around the bottom. Yeah, I'll take it around there because I'm not sure about to fit it down this path here. The Derry Longhorn is sort of your standard big truck, except it has a couple of things that are less common. It has permanent all-wheel drive and diff locks, which on the American trucks isn't that common. I mean, it's not exactly rare. Not that common either. But the interesting thing is it has this suspension mode thing here, because it has this additional wheel set in the middle, which I can raise and lower. Now they're not powered and they don't have off-road tyres, but I guess they're just there to stop you from high centering on things. I've not really found them to be that useful much, but I haven't driven this thing that much. But we can pick this trailer up and we can have a nice look at Pedro Bay while we're here. This map looks rather like all the other maps in Alaska. There's snow, there's trees, and there's icy roads. This trailer is slightly smaller, I think. Doesn't have quite as many wheels at the back. I can go to trailer view. Yeah, we only have two sets of wheels at the back of this, which should make it a bit easier to drive. But this is probably going to be the last episode I make of Alaska, because by the time we get to the next one, I'll have gone to the next map, which I think is Tamer. Why aren't we turning? We are having turning issues. I'm sure it's fine. And now we just have to get through this wonderful bit of mud. And then there's some ice a bit later on. Just use the winch. And we're out. Not too much problem. This thing is so much easier than the other one. I thought, ah, oh, we'll do the, the short one first because that'll be easier. And then we can do the longer journey afterwards. I was wrong, it's literally taking me a bit longer to get the other one 20 meters than it's taking me this one across the entire map. Also, this thing has squeaky brakes. Let's uh, do a slightly more complicated turn to get out here. I don't want to take it too sharp because we'll hit the wheels of the trailer on the inside and then we'll roll it like I did last time and there's the bridge here so I can't be wide on the exit yeah I managed to get around without jumping up onto the barrier okay this is icy that was icy than I thought it was okay we're just gonna slow it down and not go flying down the hill at dangerous speeds the factory is just here fairly uneventful journey we just have to smash our way through these fencing because it doesn't turn very sharp. And we can deliver the trailer just here. Only 180 experience. That shows how much easier it's supposed to be. But that is going to be it for this video. 
So, thank you for watching. Don't get distracted. Go subscribe now. And until next time, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.